let's do, do this little exercise on choosing a pump and the previous example we did was about choosing the pump but many times there is already one pump available so you can change it, it's already bought it's there installed, it's already operating and so on and it's operating at this volumetric flow rate so right now you have 240 gallons per minute hopefully the last engineer or the engineer of design designed it pretty well for this operation and the thing here is that we have a 6 inch impeller and we can still work with 5, I don't know why it's cut, normally you don't cut it you install the 5 inch one let's say you can transform the 6 inch to a 5 inch diameter uh, impeller and the thing here is the company is growing so it's good that means normally that your job is relatively safe sales are expected to grow that means profit for the company hopefully so they're going to need a new flow rate because they are increasing and growing and so on they want to almost uh, make twice the production so from 240 gallons per minute they need 500 gallons per minute and the thing here is they want to favor economics so you are right now the engineer you have this pump right now operating with this volumetric flow rate and this uh, impeller size so let's see how does the pump looks like so probably you will have this and if you don't have it talk to your supplier maybe he can give it to you and if you definitely don't have it you have two options or you ignore this pump and buy another one or you do the pump curve yourself which I will definitely don't recommend so be sure to have the model and the plans so one thing here we are already operating 3550 revolutions per minute so that's good to know uh, okay you have the diameters and so on right now we have the actual flow rate which is this one right here we know we are operating a 6 inch diameter and the curve or the point of operation you don't need to know the let's say the the system curve because we already know it it's right here this is the point of operation the actual point of operation and as you can see you probably will ask yourself or at least you should ask yourself why did the engineer choose this one right here why didn't he choose to another pump because as you can see this pump is a little bit more confident working in this section which is high loads of yo guys don't forget that you can always ask plenty of questions in the comment section right here for example we are right now in point 28 if you have any doubt or for example I added this one for an example whether you use 9.8 in minute 354 so go I go 3 minute 54 and you got this 9.8 I will answer you that this is due to the fact that I'm using gravity in the SI unit system which is 9.8 you can leave it here and I will answer you as soon as possible volumetric flow rate and also with huge a uh, little bit bigger diameters so why would he choose that you have one option he chose it almost randomly and didn't expect to grow or maybe he expected to grow he was seeing or analyzing that maybe growing was a possibility so the actual point has an efficiency which is very low it's actually right here it has a power lower than 15 it's right here and this is 10 so yeah it's nearest to 15 let's say 14 and the actual head we have is this 135 so the new design is 500 gallons per minute so this must be satisfied what can we do right now mm, the thing here is that if we wanted to follow the 5 inch diameter mm, I don't think it will get to that and maybe the 6 inch diameter maybe but we have no data and we will not get that flow rate so what can we do I will or if I were the engineer I would propose buying a greater diameter instead of forcing the 6 inch diameter or the 5 inch diameter I will tell my boss or the operation manager that it will be more highly recommended to forget these ideas and buy the impellers or you sell them right here because not only that you're going to have better efficiency and 
Well, actually just that, you're going to have very efficiency. And yes, you will be working with high loads of power, but that makes sense because we are increasing the flow rate. Previously we used 14 with a very, very bad, 14 with a very, very bad, with about 16%. Right now we're going to use something around 40 and 30, let's say 35. Oops. Let's say, yeah, 37 right now. If we use this line or 41 if we use this one so we're going to use almost 20% more efficient those pump so that will be my humble opinion that or maybe even I will go and find out suppliers and check out if it's worth it to change the total pump instead of just buying an impeller which I don't think so but this needs to be analyzed and of course always put money on the long term, how much money is going to cost this and how much money is going to cost this. So probably you're going to see that this is the cheapest option and the fastest one and the most common one. So that was also one easy problem. You can find out more problems here. Go to the courses, apply fluid dynamics. You will see solved problems and many theoretical quizzes which will grab your thinking and then you can actually check out these slides by yourself and not in the video and yeah that's essentially what they wanted to show you and see you in the next this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.